WWE did not show you the true ending of Monday Night Raw. Did we just see Becky Lynch's last match in WWE, AEW Double or Nothing injuries, and my review of Monday Night Raw? Strap in, folks, because I'm Luke Owen, and this is the WrestleTalk News. Support WrestleTalk! Much like Drew McIntyre, Damian Priest, and Seth Rollins already this year, WWE have been playing it very close in tying up some of their biggest stars to new long-term contracts. But eventually, they got over the line. They didn't allow things to get too close. You know, like five days close. And yet that's exactly what has happened with Becky Lynch. Fightful Slick reported in April of last year that Becky Lynch's contract was coming up around this time in 2024, which was even confirmed by Lynch herself over WrestleMania weekend. It was speculated that one of the reasons she dropped the Women's World Championship at King and Queen of the Ring was because she's not penned a new deal with the company and Really, they can't have her be the champion if she's not going to be in WWE anymore. Liv Morgan did indeed win Lynch's title on Saturday, and then ahead of their steel cage match that closed out this week's Raw, Fightful Select reported that Becky Lynch and WWE had not reached terms on a new contract. Not that they were close to an agreement, not that they were far from one, just that a deal was not in place. And unless a new deal is signed this week, Becky Lynch will be a free agent this Saturday and free to go wherever she wants and do whatever she pleases. Fightful Select note that her lack of win on Raw was not a sign of the contract negotiations. Following that loss on Raw, Lynch sent out the cryptic tweet to be continued with a photo of her walking away. So what happens next? Well, according to Sean Ross Sapp on his review of Raw over on Fightful's YouTube channel, by this time next week, if she doesn't re-sign, I think both WWE and AEW will offer her what is the biggest contract in women's wrestling history. News of her contract was clearly rife among those in the building where Raw was held, as after the event went off the air, the crowd sung Lynch off with chants of thank you, Becky. I guess, as Lynch herself noted on Twitter, to be continued. And while WWE are dealing with contracts, AEW are dealing with injuries coming out of Sunday's Double or Nothing, which actually were quite minimal considering the madness of anarchy in the arena. Brian Alvarez noted on Twitter that Jack Perry was totally fine despite being set on actual fire and Darby Allen was also fine after being checked out at the hospital. He posted a photo of the aftermath of taking a super kick from thumbtack covered Reeboks while being hung upside down. Ouch. But more concerning was Adam Copeland, who limped to the back with Gangrel after his match with Malachi Black, where Copeland leaped off the top of the cage onto Black onto a table wrapped in barbed wire. Alvarez in his Twitter update noted that Copeland was hurt on the cage dive, but I don't know the severity yet. On his review of Raw, Sean Rossap added that Copeland was optimistic about the injury, hoping that it's not too severe. We'll have more from our review of Raw in a moment, but first, here is a word from today's sponsor. Why, hello there, Peter. No, not the fancy man, not the fancy man. Is this to me some kind of horrible dream? A horrible dream? No, no, it's more like a horrible nightmare. What did I ever do to deserve this? Well, I don't know, Peter. I'm not sure you did deserve it because you want to get tickets to this wrestling show thing. Is that correct? Y yes, it's just so frustrating because it's payday tomorrow, so I, I don't have the cash right now. Well, Peter, if only you'd used Dave. Dave Bradshaw? I'm not lending you money, Pete. No, no, Peter. Not Dave Bradshaw. He may be tall, but you need something else. You need something reliable, something you can trust, something that's got your back. You need Dave, Pete. You need Dave. Okay, uh, so so what what's Dave? Dave is the banking app that's levelling the financial playing field. When you download Dave, you can get up to $500 in five minutes or less. No credit check, no late fees. It's part of Dave's extra cash account. Advance the money you need with no interest and then settle up later. So why don't you download Dave now at dave.com forward slash wrestle. That's dave.com forward slash wrestle. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Eligible Eligibility criteria and instant transfer fees apply. Banking services provided by Evolve, member FDIC. Wow, that, that, that sounds amazing. I, I can't wait to use it. I mean, it's so much better than the last Dave I used. Oh. Just because Dave's tall doesn't mean he doesn't have feelings, Pete. Now wake up! Oh. No, 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 
it, it feels too good. I don't want it to be a dream. And now it's time for my review of Monday Night Raw, AKA, ha, you Americans missed the smoochy kiss ending edition of Monday Night Raw in about five minutes. Happy Labor Day weekend. The show opened with your new King of the Ring, Gunther, who holds the crown rather than wears it because silly king gimmicks are beneath him. That's my champion right there. He said that the Intercontinental Championship had no prestige before he won it. He's correct on that. And that the King of the Ring had no prestige until he won it also correct, and that the World Heavyweight Championship currently has no prestige because it was won by a Money in the Bank cash-in. He's three for three on correct things. That's my champion right there. Damien Priest came out to say, well, lots of people have won this via cash-in, and when we meet at SummerSlam, I'll teach you a few things you probably don't know about this business. It was a good promo from Priest, but not as good as my champion, obviously. But in order to get to Gunther, Priest must first get past Drew McIntyre, who came out next for a promo, and Gunther... Well, Gunther just just left. It was weird. Like the Seth feud, Drew pointed out the Priest is distracted by other things around him, like Gunther at SummerSlam, and the falling apart of the Judgment Day. It's a good story from Drew, as when he did this with Seth and he was distracted, Drew won. But Priest is smarter than the average bear. He pointed out, you're trying to get under my skin and it's not working, but is your wife going to be at Clash in the Castle? What, what, what was her name again? Andrew immediately tried to Will Smith the situation, proving the priest is actually the one with the upper hand in terms of the mental game. This was awesome from Priest and brilliant from Drew, who is phenomenal in this role. Here's my new pitch. Priest retains the title at Clash in the Castle via CM Punk interference. Drew wins money in the bank, then cashes in on Gunther after he wins the title at SummerSlam. It gives Drew so much fuel for his hypocritical fire. He said after Mania that he hates the money in the bank briefcase because he's lost his title twice via it. And it adds to Gunther's point that the World Heavyweight Championship still isn't prestigious because he lost it via cash -in. Back to Raw though, and we're not done with people coming down to the ring for this promo segment as Braun Strowman came out to beat up JD McDonough in a squash match that went actually longer than you'd think. JD targeted his knee, which Strowman sold for the rest of the show as he chased JD around the building after hitting him with a chair. But because of the limp that he had, he was walking around the building like his pants were full of doo-doo. Where's that JT Montana? Well, I'm gonna get that JT Montana. Well, I'm first strong, but I'm gonna get JT. Ricochet found himself cleared after last week's attack, but without a Bron Breaker to face because he's been suspended. He instead faced Ilya Dragunov in a very good match, but wait, what's that? A three way feud? You know what that means? DQ finish! Lame! Bron beat up both men after the match, and he's hitting Adam Pearce too. Look, I'm all for three-way feuds. I actually really like three-way feuds, but this is our third one in a month, and they've all been set up the same way. Miz and our truth did some comedy about ice cream, and New Day looked to get a shot of the tag turtles, but were interrupted by Karrion Cross, who pointed out that Xavier Woods is the only member of New Day to not win the WWE Championship. Woods challenged AOP, who he called Tocca and Razor, BABIES! THEY ARE BABIES! To a match next week, AOP then beat the Creed Brothers in three minutes. I know some people will get upset that the Creed's lost in a few minutes, but I think this is just more reason for them to join Team Gable once the Alpha Academy disbands. Sheamus came out for a promo on Ludwig Kaiser, then got into a brawl with that man, which was separated by reps. I am very much looking forward to their banger next week. Lyra Valkyria defeated Kairi Sane in a few minutes when she countered the insane elbow. A good win following her Queen of the Ring final loss, but the match wasn't really given enough time to get over, so the finish felt a little flat. Io Sky decided that it was just one of those days when Sane and Kai went backstage breaking stuff because, well, everything is f***ed and everyone sucks. Look, she didn't really know why, but she had to justify throwing that lamp off. She had some human contact, but they did not interact because, well, perhaps their lives were on contract. But their best bet was to stay away, mother fluffers, because it was just one of those days. Priest told Damien Priest that he's spoken with Rhea Ripley about his actions in Saudi Arabia, and he'll make it right tonight. Narrator, he did not. Rey Mysterio took on Carlito like it's WWE from 2006, only this time Mysterio won, so it's not exactly like 2006. Damien Priest then laid him out, which is quite like 2006, which sets up a match between them next week. 
The Witches also made their Raw debut, setting up a match with Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, as Sonya Deville revealed that no one respects the current number one contenders in the locker room. Bronson Reed beat Otis when Chad Gable wouldn't let Otis do the worm and then threatened to whip him with a belt after the match, while Maxine and Tazawa watched. Somewhere in the world, someone was jerking off to this segment. Sami Zayn ruined their mood though because he came out to make the save. Gable attacked Sami and Otis did nothing to stop him, leaving with Gable once again. I'm really loving this rise of Otis and I cannot wait for that babyface turn. The crowd were going Savannah Bananas for him. And the main event saw Liv Morgan retain her Women's World Championship inside a salad steel cage, which wasn't as good as their match from the weekend and had the wackiest of wacky finishes. Dom opened the door for Becky to leave, but Braun Strowman came out to chase off JD McDonough and Finn Balor, and in the process of doing his choo-choo train gimmick, he bumped Dom into the steel door, which bumped into Becky Lynch and stopped her leaving, and Liv Morgan just walked out of the cage and won. Wacky to the nth degree. But the real story came after the match and the USA Network feed cut short and didn't show it. Liv Morgan planted a big old smoochy kiss on Dom, who looked none too pleased about this. Liv has taken Rhea's title. She is in the process of taking her sub, and with Priest seemingly on the outs from Judgment Day, perhaps she'll take over the group as well. Rhea's return pop is going to be awesome. The match wrapped up a very fine edition of Monday Night Raw, notable for it potentially being Becky's last match in WWE, at least under this contract, but barely standard elsewhere. This week's Raw is three out of five. Now go and watch this week's episode of Monday Night Raw, where we're playing my GM mode on WWE 2K24, and myself and Pete had an epic, epic falling out.